Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Moses gets the Hebrews out of Egypt. That's the Paschal mystery, the Passover mystery, the passing over from slavery to freedom, from death to new life. He gets them into the wilderness. There, they press the panic button. The first crisis has to do with water, the second has to do with bread, the third has to do with meat. What are we going to eat and drink? And there's a reverb on this complaining that they do, there's murmuring. There's a reverb, there's an echo, there's a flip side to their complaining. They're going to be told because they complain so much that they themselves can't get into the promised land, only the next generation gets into the promised land. They wander around for 40 years. And God uses that constructively, but there are some who don't complain. Joshua and Caleb don't complain. They get into the promised land. They see it. Then there's Elijah. He's at the bottom of his barrel when we meet him getting fed by ravens. God sends ravens who feed him when he's in the wilderness. He trusts God. He doesn't press the panic button. So the reverb, the echo effect on that is he gets the provision he needs. He's sent out to do the rest of his work. Well, then in Lord of the Rings, there's Frodo and Sam. And in their wilderness, they don't press the panic button. The reverb on that, the consequence on that, is they save Middle Earth. They get Lembus bread which is really like manna. Well, closer to our own time, there's the story of a Navy pilot named Ernie Rickenbacker who was shot down in the Pacific in World War II. <coughs> and those who were shot down with him were in a life raft. They were out for days in the blazing sun, so they had no food or water. And when they were at the bottom of their barrel, that discontinuity we call the end of our rope. Ernie Rickenbacker felt something on the top of his head and he reached up for it and it was a seagull that had landed on his head. He grabs it by the legs and brings it down and they have sustenance for the next days until they're picked up. But how could a seagull be out there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? It was. And it landed on Rickenbacker's head. Well, with us, we have our Holy Communion. And it's many mysterious provisions that spin off into our lives. That God is taking care of us. That he is providing our daily bread. And we know it most clearly when we're at those bottoms of our barrel, ends of our rope, and the discontinuities where everything looks like a crisis. Somehow, from among the cracks, erupts this provision mysterious provision that God always seems to provide, no matter how dire our crisis. One reason for that was cited by our Lord when he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. The branches are connected to the vine. Think of the roots of the vine as being up in heaven. So the roots are up there, the branches are down here, that's us. We are continuously drawing our resources from a risen, victorious Lord. It's continuous because the sap is flowing through the roots down into the branches. The reverb is that we are constantly drawing our resources from a risen and victorious Lord who supplies all our needs. St. Paul said that God will supply our needs in Christ Jesus. So we can work as if everything on us, but we can pray as if everything depends on God, and enjoy and adore the amazing provision he makes for us when we say, give us this day our daily bread. Our greatest need, more than bread, is for forgiveness. God forgives us when we repent. Repentance has several 
aspects to it. It has sorrow for sin, genuinely sorry because we see what our sin has done to our Lord. We confess our sins, we tell them to God, we agree with God concerning our sins, and we fully intend the amendment of life. We want to turn over a new leaf. We want God to remake us from inside out and really have his way with us. We have those qualities to repentance. God always forgives us. We have the wonderful sacrament of confession so that we have absolute assurance of our forgiveness. And the new graces that are poured into our lives priest pronounces the absolution over us. And our Lord expects us, as we've been forgiven, to forgive others. In fact, we really can't get forgiven any more than we forgive others. There's that reverb effect, that to the extent to which we forgive others, God is able to forgive us. So we want to pray, as our Lord taught us, for our enemies, for those who have wronged us, for those with whom it is difficult to live. It is said that we only love God as much as the most difficult person in our lives. So think of who that is and start praying for that person. That they will come, if they, if they don't know our Lord, that they will come to know our Lord. The reverb effect is that he can forgive us to the extent that we forgive others. In other words, what goes around comes around. This applies to the interesting phrase called God's wrath. Now, God is love. God doesn't have love. God is love. So what is his wrath? Well, God's wrath is simply his love as it reaches our human resistance. There's love, nothing but love coming down from God. But if it meets the hardness of heart, if it meets contempt of his word and commandments, then the reverb on that we call his wrath. So if you're trying to repave a new road, you've got to dig up the old one, and you've got to get bulldozers and heavy equipment and air hammers and tear out the old asphalt or the old concrete. And that's kind of like the wrath of God. He's got to do that with us. He's got to break into our hard hearts, or he's got to find ways to get into our, into our lives, into where we really live. He uses our crises and our trials to do that. But we sometimes call that God's wrath. It's the energy of his love as it meets our resistance. And it helps to be able to think that way, that our resistance always has that reverb effect, the recoil effect. Sometimes we say that if the crime has a punishment that fits it. The punishment fits the crime. The punishment and the crime are the same thing. The punishment is the reverb of the crime. So if we forgive, we are forgiven. If we repent and forgive, we are forgiven. If we give, we get back. Our Lord said, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over. If we forgive, we free ourselves from the entanglements of resentment and bitterness. When we give and forgive, God gives us more than we ask for. The publican who went into the temple to pray, the Pharisee was over here and the publican was over here. The Pharisee boasted about his virtues and his achievements, but the publican smote upon his breast and said, God, be merciful to be a sinner. He asked for mercy, but he went home completely justified. Jesus said, this man went home justified. He got more than he asked for. He just asked for mercy, he got complete justification right with God. We not only reap what we sow, but we reap what we sow with interest, with dividends. God pours it back out upon us, and it's amazing how this happens. If it is understanding you want, give understanding, be understanding, and reap understanding with dividends. Reverb effect is that you will be more understood than ever. And so if it's sympathy you want, give sympathy, be sympathetic, and you will reap it lavishly. If it's love you want, we all want love, we all want to be loved, give love, and love will come back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. If it's
it is forgiveness you need, be forgiven. And you will be completely forgiven, cleansed, and healed.